Picture this, a unified Korean peninsula, rich in culture and history stretching back thousands of years. It's hard to imagine, isn't it? Yet that's precisely what we had before the division that led to the creation of North and South Korea. To understand this division, we need to take a step back into history. The story of the Korean Peninsula begins with the Three Kingdoms period, spanning from 57 BC to 668 AD. During this era, three kingdoms, Goguryeo, Baekje, and Silla, competed for control of the peninsula, each leaving a distinctive cultural imprint. Then came the unified Silla era, from 668 to 935, when the Silla kingdom managed to unify the peninsula under one rule. This period was marked by significant advancements in art, science, and technology. Following the Silla era, the Goryeo dynasty emerged in 918, ruling until 1392. The Goryeo period is renowned for its cultural and technological achievements, including the invention of movable metal type printing. The Hosean dynasty, which began in 1392 and lasted until 1910, was the last royal dynasty of Korea. It was a time of profound cultural and political change, with Confucianism replacing Buddhism as the state religion and the creation of the Korean alphabet, Hangul. However, the Hoseon era ended with the Japanese occupation in 1910, a critical turning point in Korean history. The occupation, which lasted until 1945, was a period of harsh rule that deeply affected the Korean people and played a significant role in the eventual division of the peninsula. So, from a united peninsula, with a rich cultural heritage, how did we end up with North and South Korea? Let's delve into the causes. The division of Korea was not a sudden event, but a culmination of years of political tension and international interference. The year was 1945. The Second World War had come to a close, and with it, Japan's 35-year-long occupation of Korea. As the dust of the war settled, two superpowers rose to prominence on the global stage, the United States and the Soviet Union. While the world celebrated the end of a bloody conflict, for the Korean Peninsula, a new chapter was just beginning. The victorious allies agreed to divide Korea temporarily along the 38th parallel for administrative purposes. The Soviet Union took control of the North, while the United States took control of the South. However, these temporary arrangements soon became permanent fixtures. The ideological differences between the two superpowers were stark. The Soviet Union, with its communist ideology, began to establish a socialist state in North Korea. On the other hand, the United States, a beacon of capitalism and democracy, aimed to establish a democratic government in South Korea. These conflicting visions for Korea's future only served to widen the divide. Efforts to hold nationwide elections were thwarted by disagreements and mutual distrust. The North and the South set up separate governments, each claiming to be the legitimate representative of the Korean people. But it was not just the superpowers that were at odds, Within Korea, too, there was a deep ideological divide. There were those who welcomed socialism, seeing it as a means to eradicate the feudal system and achieve economic equality. Others, however, saw democracy as the path to freedom and prosperity. The division of Korea was not just about the 38th parallel or the geopolitical machinations of superpowers. It was about a people torn apart by differing visions of their future, a people whose destinies were shaped by ideologies far beyond their control. The 38th parallel became more than just a line on the map. It marked a deep ideological divide that would shape the destinies of millions. The ripple effects of the division have been far-reaching, shaping not just the Korean peninsula, but the world at large. One of the most immediate and devastating consequences was the Korean War, a brutal conflict that spanned from 1950 to 1953. Despite the armistice signed in July of 1953, a formal peace treaty was never agreed upon leaving North and South Korea technically in a state of war. This uneasy ceasefire has created a tangible tension that has lingered for over half a century, a chilling reminder of the division's far-reaching implications. The Korean Demilitarized Zone, a 250-kilometer-long and 4-kilometer-wide buffer zone between the North and South, stands as a stark symbol of this ongoing conflict. But the effects of the division go beyond the military standoff. Over the years, the two Koreas have embarked on vastly different paths, economically, politically, and socially. South Korea adopted a market economy and rapidly industrialized, becoming one of the world's top economies. It's a global leader in technology, boasting giants like Samsung and Hyundai. In contrast, 
North Korea has remained largely isolated from the global economy, with a state-controlled system that has struggled to provide for its citizens. It's a country where political power is centralized, with a heavy emphasis on military might and nuclear capabilities. Socially, the division has led to a striking divergence in the everyday lives of Korean people. While South Koreans enjoy a high standard of living and widespread access to the internet, North Koreans face restrictions on information and expression, and basic necessities are often in short supply. The division has also separated families, creating a deep and personal wound that underscores the human cost of this geopolitical divide. Countless stories of families torn apart, with relatives unable to communicate or visit each other, paint a heartbreaking picture of the division's toll. The division has left a lasting legacy, one that continues to shape the Korean peninsula and the world. History is not just about understanding the past, but also about reflecting on its implications for the present and the future. The division of the Korean peninsula, a significant event in world history, continues to influence the geopolitical landscape today. The tensions that originated decades ago are still palpable, influencing the dynamics between North and South Korea and extending to their relationships with other global powers. These tensions remind us of the resilience of historical events and their lasting impacts, yet they also invite us to consider the potential for change. As we ponder over the division, we can't help but wonder about the possibilities of reunification. Could this division be mended, bringing an end to a long-standing conflict? Or will the politics of the past continue to dictate the future? As we reflect on the division of the Korean Peninsula, we are reminded of the enduring power of history and its ability to shape our world.